So I'm getting a little interested in working on the Busa Rail project here again. So we're going to snoop around here a bit and see what's up. What I want to do in today's video is dig into the geometry of the rear suspension here just to show you what I did to get these wheels to behave the way I want them to as they go through the suspension cycle. So now just for reference sake, this tire is 31 inches tall and just get a look at how high it is off the ground. And that's how high, well that's how far I'm going to let it swing through its travel and it's slightly more than it would be in real but it's close to the amount of travel that the machine will actually have. So I'm going to get you guys set up over there and you watch this wheel. So there's a couple of different ways a guy can build a rear suspension for a mini sand rail like this. So I've chosen to go with a double A-arm setup along with a stabilizer link which I've also added into this whole setup. You can see it's mounted at the back of the hub there and then it's mounted to the frame over here along with the A-arms and that piece itself, that stabilizer link in the middle there, that could easily alter the toe on the geometry as the suspension moves. You know by toe I mean like if it moves like that or like that and uh, camber is like this and like that and camber will be as a result of uh, the geometry in the A-arms. So there's two things we were watching for the toe and the camber as we drop the wheel down there before. So yeah and uh, I'm, so I'm going to fill you guys in on uh, how I'm keeping that wheel in check there as it goes through all that travel and uh, the trick here for me is to keep the pivot points all in the same spot like for example all of these rod ends right here if I would get you set up to look right down the back of that rod end you would see that all three of these are in line so that they're they're all the same distance off of the frame meaning the pivot point is the same for all three here and the same thing here at this end so we have three pivot points here also because we've got the two rod ends for the the A-arms and also the stabilizer link so these here also, I tried real hard to keep the pivot point all in the same spot. Like by that I mean like, let's say, measuring off the, uh, the face of the hub here and measuring back here. They're all the same, or as close as I could possibly get it. So because of that, because these are all the same, they're all lined up. Their pivot points are all in the same spot. And the pivot points here are all in the same spot. And the same thing over there, keeping that all in line. Because of that, that is what's uh, keeping this thing all in check here. And another big thing is that stabilizer link. It, you, you can see how it's parallel with the, uh, with the A-arms. If I would have that at a bit of an angle, if, uh, if I would drop this end, let's say two inches, and then it would kind of be at an angle up like that, well then uh, that would mess up my toe. It would be uh, changing as the, uh, the wheel goes through its travel. So, this has to be parallel with the A-arms. The pivot points have to be all in the same spot here. And uh, pivot points are in the same spot there. And the other thing that's really critical in, the, in this application is to keep the A-arms the same distance apart. Like if I'd measure on the inside here, A-arm to A-arm, it's the same thing at the back here. And then if I go to the other side and I measure there, all three points are exactly the same here, there, and A arm to A arm there. That's all the same. And of course, like I said before, that stabilizer link, that's critical too. That has to be parallel with the A arms. And then uh, it's pretty happy then. I, mean, the, I, I don't have uh, you know different components fighting with each other because they have a different radius as, it, as they go through its uh, sweep of the suspension. So that's it. That is how I uh, pulled this off. So some of the things I want to show you guys yet is uh, what I'm going to do with this lower A-arm. It's going to get some extensive bracing, you know, to hold the load of that shock. And then of course I got to build some elaborate stuff up here for uh, the shock mount also. So the back of this machine is actually going to look quite a bit different yet as, uh, as I progress through this whole project. And uh, out in the front there, it's looking pretty barren, but same kind of thing is going to be happening up there. I want to, you know, I'm going to have to build a lot of structure up here 
to support the shock and then of course it gets the long a arms you know and then the uh, front tires so the front is actually going to look very much like the back and uh with the exception of instead of a stabilizer link it's going to be a tie rod instead you know the same kind of idea though so anyways 